Welcome to the Bible Forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. We're going to take a look into the future tonight. It's an article that popped up on prophecynewswatch.com. It was originally published at something called the Organic Prepper and was reposted on Prophecy News Watch with permission. And if you are easily frightened, you may not want to continue watching this video. Today you can't really go anywhere without encountering cameras. You go into a store, chances are there are security cameras. You get money at your ATM, there's a camera watching you do it. You drive down the streets of any city almost in America, more cameras. Your neighbors may have those doorbells from Amazon that are surveilling the entire neighborhood. And many of these cameras are tied into facial recognition databases or the footage can be easily compared if authorities are looking for somebody. The New York Post is reporting that a biometric self-boarding gate has officially been launched at John F. Kennedy International Airport. Lufthansa has deployed the paperless, high-tech boarding process, they call it, which uses facial recognition technology to verify travelers with a photo capture. They do that right there at the gateway. Air France, Japan Airlines, Norwegian Airlines are expected to follow suit at the same terminals, terminals in Queens, New York. It's called Vision Box and is being tested through a partnership with U.S. Customs and Border Protection and the Terminal One Group Association. Miguel Liepman, CEO and founder, said it's become crucial for airports and airlines to adopt biometric capabilities along with the processes which require interaction with the traveler, therefore enhancing and scaling operational capacity for growing quicker within their existing footprint. Did you see this past week how the lady got on an airplane? Was that in New York or Washington, one of those big airports? Nobody knows how she got on. She wouldn't get off. They had to shut the whole thing down and cops had to come in and drag her off. The digital boarding process validates the eligibility of a traveler without having to present a passport or a boarding pass. When a passenger approaches a self-boarding gate, a biometric enabled camera simply captures the passenger's facial image. It's built integrated right into the gate. You don't stop and smile at the birdie. That image is then securely sent to the U.S. Customers, Customs Traveler Verification Service, which conducts a matching process with a stored digital facial token captured at the initial immigration process or from a U.S. passport. Within seconds, the system reconciles the passenger identity and his eligibility to enter the flight. The positive match of both verification triggers <clears throat> both verifications triggers the gate to open and the passenger can, passenger can then board the airplane. Now, it's not the first time biometric boarding has been used at JFK. Last year, JetBlue rolled out its first biometric self-boarding gate for cu customers flying to select international jet destinations. That was at JFK's airport's Terminal 5. A slew of U.S. airports already offers biometric boarding. But as it turns out, it isn't just facial recognition that we have to be concerned about. DHS is retiring its old system that was based on facial recognition. The new system is called HART, Homeland Advanced Recognition Technology System. It's an alarming new identity system being put in place by the Department of Homeland Security. It's a cloud-based system that holds information about the identities of hundreds of millions of people. The new system is expected to bring more processing power, new analytical capabilities, and increased accuracy to the department's biometrics operation. Did I tell you it was in the cloud? The cloud's safe, right? No. 
It will also allow the agency to look beyond the three types of biometric data that it uses today. They use the face, the iris, and the fingerprint. They do that and identify people through a variety of other characteristics as well, like palm prints, scars, tattoos, physical markings, even voices. Incidentally, the cloud hosting for Heart is being done by none other than Amazon. You know, the ones with surveillance devices that ring doorbells and Alexa home assistants and Nest program home security systems. Anybody see a pattern growing here? Keep in mind that a Amazon Web Services also hosts data for the CIA, the DOD, and NASA. Bet you didn't know that, did you? As Hart becomes more established, that old saying, you can run but you cannot hide, is going to seem ever more true. DHS is delighted at how much further the new system can take them into surveilling Americans. They said, when we get to Hart, we will be better, faster, stronger. We'll be relieved of a lot of the capacity issues that we have now. And then going forward, they'll, there will be able to add capabilities. The DHS wants to break free of the limitations of the old system with their new and improved system. Hart will use multiple pieces of biometric data to increase identification accuracy. Today, when an official runs a person's face, fingerprint, or iris scan through IDENT's massive database, the system doesn't return a single result. Rather, it assembles a list of dozens of potential candidates with different levels of confidence, which a human analyst must then look through to make a final decision. This new system, or the old system rather, can only handle one modality at a time. So if the agent is hypothetically trying to identify somebody using two different data points, they need to assess two lists of candidates to find a single match. It gets a little cumbersome. Now that problem doesn't exist with this new system. It will take all of the data points. It'll take the person's fingerprint, their face, any identification on their body, any scars, anything that they can find. They will put together all of this and they will find out it's you. Heart can include multiple data points and just that one query it means it will rank potential matches based on the information that's available. Agents will be able to analyze much easier the potential matches. It will help the agency overcome data quality issues, things that often plague biometric scans. If the face image is pristine but the fingerprint is fuzzy, the system will give a higher quality data point for weight. Hart's Phase two solicitation also lists DNA matching as a potential application system for the hundreds of thousands of detained migrants, adding this to the FBI's criminal database. There are some legal issues to untangle, according to the agents, but it will likely be leveled out and put to use sooner than we think or know. Apparently, there's no regulation or oversight of government agencies collecting and using this kind of data, at least not yet. And the pushback from civil liberty activists and lawmakers hasn't slowed DHS one single bit. Homeland Security currently shares its biometric data and capabilities with numerous groups, including but not limited to the Justice Department and State Departments. In the years ahead, Hart promises to strengthen those partnerships and allow others to flourish, according to the spokesperson. While today the department limits other agencies' access to ensure they don't consume too much of its limited computing power, Hart will do away with that constraint. Right now a person must give information to a single agency. They do that thinking it will be used for one specific purpose. But depending on how that information is shared, they could potentially find themselves subjected to unforeseen negative consequences. Apparently, the government gets a lot of leeway to share information. 
Already many of us provide biometric data without giving it a second thought. We cheerfully swab a cheek and send it to sites like Ancestry.com, providing not only our DNA, but matches to many relatives who never gave permission for that DNA to be in a database. And then there are the cell phones. If you've got a newer phone, it's entirely possible that it has asked you to set up a fingerprint login or a facial recognition or maybe a voice recognition. It doesn't stretch the imagination a great deal to believe that those samples are shared with folks beyond the device in your hand. Add this to your device being tracked by everybody and just about every place you go through a wide variety of seemingly innocuous apps and you start to get the picture. The U.S. State Department has a database with 230 million searchable images. How do they get these? From your driver's license, for one. Anybody with a passport, an immigration visa. You have been part of an unwilling, you have been an unwilling participant in a database. So here's the breakdown of who has a photo database. The State Department has about 15 million photos of passport or visa holders. The FBI has about 15 million photos of people who have been arrested or convicted of crimes. The Department of Defense has about 6 million photos, mainly of Iraqis and Afghans. Various police agencies and states have at least 210 million driver's license photos. The invasion of privacy is just one facet of the surveillance state and we should not be surprised considering the information Edward Snowden just shared about the overreaching tentacles of the NSA into all our communications. We are filing our identities with our government and they can identify us at will without any requirement for probable cause. The authorities that use this techno technology do so to make us safer by helping to prevent identity fraud and identify criminals. But what freedoms are we giving up for this safety? We're giving up the freedom of having the most essential form of privacy, that of being able to go about our daily business without being watched or identified. And once you've been identified, you are connected to all sorts of other personal inf information that has been compiled like your address, your driving, criminal record, and potentially anything else that's been neatly filed away at your friendly neighborhood fusion center. You're walking your dog. You fail to scoop the poop. If there's a surveillance camera in the area, it would be a simple matter, given the technology, for you to be identified. If you're attending a protest that might be considered anti-government, don't expect to be anonymous. A photo of the crowd would could easily result in the identification of most of the participants. Are you purchasing ammunition, preparedness items, books about on controversial topics? Paying cash won't buy you much in the way of privacy either. Your purchases will most likely be captured on the CCTV TV camera at the checkout stand, making you easily identifiable to anybody who might want to track these kinds of things. What if a person with access to this technology uses it for personal, less than ethical reasons like stalking an attractive woman he saw on the street? The potential for abuse is mind-boggling. If you can't leave your house without being identified, do you have any real freedoms left? Or are you just a resident in a very large cage? Can you say 666? We're already there. It just has to get organized. 